And I think we're back. That seems about right. Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending January 8, 2022. We have a slightly different format this time than usual, given that we have a slightly different setup than usual. Oh, and we have some some things that are different here, but that's totally fine. Let us get started, though. <laughs> Um, nothing's on fire. So nothing's on good. fire. It's all good. It's all, all fine. Good. Um, <laughs> Japan has been attempting to crack down on the rampant piracy of anime and manga for the last few years. And this year, the project's going international. Companies and organizations from more than 13 countries are coming together to form the new International Anti-Piracy Organization, or IAPO. Uh, we just have to launch it in April. Um, uh, the center of the organization is Japan's Content Overseas Distribution Association, which includes 32 major Japanese studios, publishers, and other companies. Mm. Um, the Motion Picture Association of the U U.S., made up of six members, including Sony and Netflix, will also join, as well as, this is interesting, from the Copyright Society of China, around 450 members from China, China. about copyright, which I find fascinating. Um, mm. South Korean and Vietnamese companies are also expected to participate. Um, um, IAPO is um, in particular concerned with the piracy of manga and anime. Uh, also says law enforcement with criminal investigations, especially those requiring cooperation from authorities in multiple countries, because of course this is indeed an international issue. Um, according to Nikkei Asia, who originally reported the story, piracy cost the manga industry in Japan approximately 800 billion yen from January through October Ooh. of 2021. Um, Jesus. During that period, the entire market for authorized publications was around 600 billion yen. Uh, uh, so piracy uh, was bigger than the, actual than the entire Jesus market. <laughs> uh, now, granted, estimates wow. are always complicated and difficult, and you know, who knows? Um, it, big round numbers, but wow. <laughs> Let's make this really shocking. It would only cost like 80 billion yen, but make it look bigger. <laughs> Give it another zero. That will make it fantastical. Yeah. Yep. Um, Still ridiculous. <laughs> like they know, over right? they overshot the industry. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Wow. Um, so why don't they just buy the industry and become the industry? I mean, it can well, feed itself. Well, right? it's the thing. Is, and, and to be clear, and that's the, the weirdness about the number, this is what the piracy, what piracy technically cost the industry. So it's essentially the lost revenue. Right. Right. Um, so, like, they didn't actually make that money, but they, they the, the, the market industry would have if all those had been sales, which is always a, you know, a nebulous. loose number. Right. Shall we? Yeah, nebulous, yeah, right. exactly. But still. Um, I, I think you know, we, we, we've certainly seen the numbers before on these piracy sites having, you know, 80 trillion hits a day. Like, it, it is right, absurd yeah. the amount of traffic these things get. So, yeah, pretty interesting. Um, it's kind of hard to get, like, too excited about this because there have been these in the past. They formed together. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's uh, enforcement. But, you know, this guy hasn't fallen yet. So, like, it's kind of hard right. to see this being a, a really major thing. I know. What do you guys think? Someday. I think it's amazing China has thrown for yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just having that discussion actually, the other day actually, about actually. having like a Louis Bouton uh, coat and like a Rolex watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, those things are still rampantly mm -hmm. produced in I, I think they're just like public. Oh, yeah. We're, we're here to help stop it. Okay. Here's what they're doing, guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know. We're here to direct you away from stopping things. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I get, in, you know, part of me is encouraged by it, some of them, but yeah, I, I think that once, I'll be honest, once America gets in, in, into the fray, I think mm -hmm. once the, you know, the, you know, once we get more and more, more solid numbers, as it seems mm -hmm. to be the trend that more and more people are doing this mm -hmm. and, you know, Thank you to COVID. Mm -hmm. I, True. Yeah. You know, I, I don't people know. People at home. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, and um, <clears throat> and I think that once that that Americans who might be invested in with mm. these companies start losing money, that's mm -hmm. usually the impetus for the, the big guns to go, okay, we're going to step in now yeah. and, and kind of, you know, 
be the, the, the main backer of all this. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right. Until until something like that happens. Yeah. It's, well, Sony and Netflix. Like those are yeah. pretty big big Yeah. People. Well I mean so they have a vested have... interest. I mean, yeah. you know, if it's I mean, you know, like look at Coney Can't Communicate. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and, and Sony's buying up properties left and right. Yep. Absolutely. But as we all know, piracy is like whack a mole game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's yeah. it's you're gonna do this. You're gonna you know try and set some bright line rules. You're gonna try and get all this cooperation going, mm -hmm. and then those forces of the darkness will then just skittle mm -hmm. off into another shadow, mm -hmm. and they'll did, did do you, yeah. something else to do the oh, same sure. thing. Oh sure, it, it, it always did, exists, but yeah. Did, did, so did we'll you, see how effective this is long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did yeah. you guys ever see uh, that the movie from the '80s, Amazon Women on the Moon? Yes. Can't say I had. You, you haven't. Nope. Or, or, I did, and I can't be, even begin to remember. I don't remember. Uh, it. I so the very first it. sketch, the very first sketch is it's a series of sketches in okay. the movie. The very first sketch is like this pirate battle, and mm -hmm. the pirates get on there, and they go, "Look at all this booty!" And they they bring up all these VHS tapes, and they put one in, and it shows the FBI warning, and they all just go. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. yeah. We will see. Um, two classic manga have announced new anime projects this week. Rumiko Takahashi Supernatural Rom-Com Urasai Yatsura is inspiring a new television anime. Yeah, yeah I yeah. saw that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the series will adapt selected stories in 1978 manga and will run for four cores. So basically four <clears throat> seasons a year. Uh, with the first season coming sometime in 2022. Um, Hideya Takahashi and Yasuhiro Kimura of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind will direct the anime at David Production with Yuko Kakihara of Cells at Work and Heaven's Lost Property overseeing the series <laughs> scripts. And I gotta say, Heaven's Lost Property is definitely the direction I can see going with her Sayatsura. It's, it's oh, well. yeah. Um, the anime... Was this is... I'm going I was just gonna say, this is, this is all I hear when I hear it. When I saw that, all, what I heard was, Darling! Mm -hmm. I'm like, no. The, uh, the anime will air on Fuji TV and other channels to mark the 100th anniversary of the manga's publisher, Shogaku Khan. Mm -hmm. um, Shueisha's Jump Festa 22 event revealed that the beloved Roni Kenshin manga is also getting a new television anime project from Leiden Films. Mm -hmm. uh, besides a brief teaser video showing Kenshin himself, no further details have been announced about the project. Whether this is just a, a remake of the original series or this adapting new storylines, we do not know. Um, mm. Although I am betting that there is a certain tie in to the popularity of the live action films. Mm. That probably kickstarted some of the, the interest in this. You don't um, think it's going to be like Yashihime and it's going to be like Kenshin's little child that goes off and does things? It might. Um, I, I believe canonically and. Um, um, Ooh, I, I have not, it's been a while since I read it. Um, um, I believe canonically uh, Kenshin does not have a child. Um, but for those who have seen it, there's a, there, there is an after story involving Yahiko. Um, so Yahiko is sort of the, the uh, Kenshin's protege. Um, but then I th but then Watsuki's been doing new Kenshin stuff, which I have not read yet. So I don't know. There, mm. may, there may be stuff there with Kenshin's kid. Very possible. Say that's one of those like you know, Brady Bunch. Bring on the uh, little mm -hmm. cousin, cousin Edward here at yep. the end. <laughs> thing going, mm -hmm. send it in a new direction. Yeah, it's possible. It's hard because Kenshin is very much about Kenshin. It's very yeah, much yeah, about yeah. you know a a former assassin and the problems of being a former assassin. So it, I, I I have no doubt what he could do it, but it would be it definitely be a challenge to figure out that new twist on the formula. Well, I mean, spy spy by family. Mm -hmm. You know, where you have two parents that are spies and how they, you know, use the child as a part of their spy game. Mm -hmm. it, it, I honestly think that could be an interesting way to go. It's like, how do you have a child when you are a former assassin? How does that mm -hmm. make for a family life? How does that affect mm -hmm. the child? You know what yeah. I mean? What choices did Kenshin make and what regrets does Kenshin have yeah. that, who knows? I, I, who knows? I, I, but it's just interesting. I hear you. The, the only reason I'm hesitating is I, I feel like the, the manga over its 33 volumes or whatever it is right. has explored a lot of that, that ground. That, that's the thing is you can totally tell interesting stories about, okay, now I'm talking to this kid. 
but there's so much em emotional ground already covered around Kenshin. Right. I don't know how, how much you, you do with that unless it is focused on the kid. Uh, right. And like, what is it like being the son of a former assassin and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. We'll see. You know, we, we will Hopefully see. We'll see. Um, and, you know, all we knew is new TV anime project. It could be a 13 episode, you know, spin off something where they're, like, they're just doing a, a brief thing. Who knows? Uh, could be right. retelling it's the beach some beach series. Things. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, there's actually some fun stuff in, in, the, in the manga about that because Watsuki was not about the fan service. He just. <laughs> was not his skill um so you know whenever characters are like bathing and so, and so forth like they're still pretty much fully clothed like he just doesn't do a lot of that stuff um a kimono is mighty heavy in that, that yeah. bath <laughs> yes it is <laughs> all right fair enough um also this week the hollywood reporter revealed that netflix and universal are developing an anime of the scott pilgrim graphic novel series um O'Malley himself was running the project and will also serve as an executive producer, along with the writer of the live action film adaptation and several others. Um, should the product, project in order for the series, it'll be animated by I Can Think of No Better Studio Than This, Science Saru. Uh, the studio behind Azuken and lots of other cool stuff. Um, this perfect stylistic match. Absolutely perfect. Um, it's been confirmed that an anime adaptation of key visual arts visual novel Summer Pockets is in the works. The game follows main character Hairi as he escapes to an isolated island after his grandmother's death and tells the story of one nostalgic summer. Though, judging by Key's previous work, nostalgic almost certainly means heartbreaking. Like, like we, we know where this is going. It's a key story. It's, it's going to stab you in the heart and then twist several times. Um, but hey, I'm up for it. We're all up for it. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm just double checking here real quick. Um, yeah, it, June Maeda is credited as, uh, as concept, um, original concept. Um, and one of the composers. So, yeah. Um, and that was a 2018 visual novel from them. Um, uh, let's see here. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading the Wikipedia entry. The game's concept is by June Maeda, who felt that the game needed to make readers cry. There we go. There we go. Okay. We know it's going to go on there. Um, gosh. Thanks, June Maeda. Um, jeez. As if the day I became a god wasn't bad enough. Um, uh, Shuji Shigeno's MF Ghost street racing manga, successor to Initial D, confirmed an upcoming TV anime adaptation this week. Um, the series takes place in the 2020s, where self driving cars are ubiquitous in Japan, and the protagonist returns to Japan after graduating at the top of his class in a British racing school. So that'll be interesting. Dealing with how self-driving cars involved in that. Um, Zach, yeah, there we go. Um, Shingo. <laughs> um, that was Killdozer, right? That was that movie. Um, <laughs> um, Shingo Adachi, character designer and chief animation director of Sword Art Online, which you may have heard of. Uh, will make his directorial debut next year with an original TV anime called Le Chorus Recoil. The anime will depict the, quote, absurd daily life, end quote, of a pair of girls. So I'm guessing a Nichijo kind of a thing, maybe? I don't know. Yes, exactly. Um, moving on to one of my favorite anime concepts in a long time. An anime adaptation is coming for the light novel series Endo and Kobayashi Live, the latest on Tudere Villainous Lissalot. Uh, Here's the plot. One day, Crown Prince Sieg suddenly hears the voice of the god telling his fiance is a Tsundere Villainous. And he must save her from her fated bad end. What he doesn't know, of course, is that these heavenly beings are actually high schoolers doing a Let's Play commentary on his own life. So I can't wait to see where that one is going. 
Um, a TV anime adaptation has also been greenlit uh, of the Teppen, or Summit manga, to come out sometime this year. It's a coming-of-age story of about three high school girls willing to be become comedians. So, that looks cool. Um, a TV anime adaptation has been greenlit for The Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten, light novel series. Um, the protagonist lives alone in his apartment, and his next-door neighbor is, of course, the most beautiful girl in school. Uh, one rainy day he sees her in distress, offers his umbrella. She returns the favor by helping him around the house, and the relationship grows from there. Um, so, yeah, I think we know where that one's going. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that anime. Um, <laughs> you definitely train in a tunnel at one point. Um, an original web anime began streaming on uh, um, an original web anime began streaming on YouTube this week from Wit Studio and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure animator Naoki Yoshibe based on music videos by Fuzi. I titled The Missing Eight. They're set in the devastated world of androids and robots. Um, that looks cool. Uh, two episodes already out. Um, there we go. Sure, why not? Um, publisher Hakusensha has opened a new YouTube channel called Hakusen Anime Channel for streaming original anime. Uh, we started it off with a two part anime of The Demon's Bride Wants to Be Eaten. Um, the Demon's Bride Wants to Be Eaten. What? 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 No, yeah. Um, uh, so the, the, the main character was saved by a demon when she was young and expected to be eaten by him in return when she grew up. When she turns 17, the time comes around. The demon has now become fond of her and doesn't plan to eat her after all. I'm avoiding that whole... No. 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 Not going to go down that... No, no. It, I'm, I'm sure it's very much... Mm -hmm. Yes, Blossoming. Um, well, I, I told you guys about the, that, that manga. Um, like, I'm suddenly the Demon King's wife with, like, eight children. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's very much that plot, but it's, like, really sweet and heartwarming. Like, like nothing creepy happens. It's like, okay, weird. Oh, dear. Um, three new anime films were also announced in the last few weeks. Um, first up, Aniplex announced that Witch on the Holy Night is getting an anime adaptation um, done by Youth Table, probably because it's by Tight Moon, um, who is the creator of uh, Fate Stay Night and the others. Uh, Youth Table also adapted Garden of Sinners and, and Unlimited Blaine Works and Heaven's Feel. Uh, the story is set in the 80s uh, about a girl who's named heir to her long uh, family line of mages, though she doesn't care about magic. Um, the original novel draft was one of the first collaborations between Kinoko Nasu and Takashi Takeuchi before they went on to found Type Moon. So it's an early work by them. The Odd Taxi anime is getting a film project titled Film Odd Taxi in the Woods. This will premiere on April 1st. Hmm. Um, the film is a quote-unquote reconstruction of the TV anime, but will also depict what happens after the anime's finale. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, director Tatsuki of Kimono Friends and Hentatsu released a teaser stating that his first original theatrical anime is coming tentatively in 2023. It'll be animated by Studio Irodori with production by Aniplex. Sorry. Aniplex. Um... Uh, Hirohiko Araki's Jojo, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure manga series. Um, oops, we're, ha we're having uh, audio issues on the other side. One second. That is true. Uh, one moment. What's going on there? Why are we not getting that? Uh, one moment. Thank you for letting me know. Um, I know exactly what's happening. I just need to pull, actually, I just need to pull it in this way. Don't. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. Thank you for letting me know. Um, audio should be there. Can you guys say something real quick? Real quick. Cool. Real quick. Excellent. There we go. Okay. Um, so JoJo celebrated its 35th anniversary with the JoJo Magazine on March 19th. 
featuring exclusive cover art drawn by Iraqi for the occasion. It'll feature a new 71-page manga one-shot of The Spoke Kishibi Rohan, a new text story, and features on the manga's anime and live-action offshoot. So if you're interested in JoJo, that will be out in both softcover print and digital versions. Hmm. The 41st compiled volume of Berserk, which Ooh. includes the final chapters that Miura himself created for the series before his passing, will launch in the United States and France next summer. Hmm. Uh, the volume shipped in Japan two weeks ago, and it's also the first volume released in the series in three years. Uh, the staff of the magazine included an afterword in the volume stating the future of the manga is still undecided and thanking its readers. Mm. Um, last up, another anime movie is taking the Japanese box office by storm this year. The Jujutsu Kaisen Zero film opened two weeks ago and sold 1.9 million tickets during its first three days giving it the number one start for a film this fiscal year and the second highest 3D opening weekend box office ever behind... Right, Mugen Train. And, um, and Green Gables. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. um, and of course, we can't mention Mugen Train without having another accomplishment of its own to bring up. This time, The Unstoppable Train is helping the annual DVD chart, the first anime film to do, do so since Ponyo in 2009. Wow. It's also the number two ranked for the most Blu-ray disc sales in one year of an animated film behind Frozen. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Competing with Disney. That's pretty darn good. Just got to yeah, say. Um, both Even tangents. On the map. I was going to say, meanwhile, Disney's planning to take them over. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just huh. buy you. Yeah, it's easier to buy you than to compete with you. Hmm. And... Um, the original Demon Slayer manga is inspiring a traditional no Kyogen stage play. I want to see that. I so oh, want I to see that. that. Wow. Oh. Uh, and both. What if they're going to do the limited, um, limited video purchase mm -hmm. tickets mm -hmm. purchase? What like you can do with the with I'm the sure. Miku one that they did? Yeah. Right. Like, oh. mm -hmm. Uh, and both Mugen Train and Jujutsu Kaisen are getting their own regular stage play adaptations as well, because why not? Interesting. Yeah. More of that. I've never seen any part of Jujutsu Kaisen. I've seen episode one. Seen That's it. Yeah. Is Shonen? Kind yes. Of... Yes. Okay. Yes. It, it is It is peak Shonen. Yes. Okay. It is. <laughs> gotcha. Nothing against it. It is very much Shonen. Um, but yeah. Explain that. It's, it's, Go, it's doing its thing. Um, yeah. Um, that's all the news for this week. Thanks for <laughs> watching. We'll see you all next week.